coaches and welcome to the Blaze Sports Swimming Clinic. My name is Julie O'Neill and I'm the Swimming Program Manager for U.S. Paralympics. I'll be walking you through some tips and information to include swimmers with disabilities in your local and community programs. So let's get started. Including athletes with disabilities in local programs brings benefit both to the athlete and to the program. The athlete gains the experience of the local coach, benefiting their competition, their training, their technique, and bringing them to a higher level. The coach and the program gain the experience of working with an athlete with a disability, and the coach becomes more knowledgeable in dealing with athletes with a variety of disabilities. All local programs can accommodate athletes with disabilities, whether it be a high school program, a local club program, or even a college program. Generally, the athlete can be included with minimal accommodation. When in doubt, the coach should always ask the athlete what they need. Let's start with some basic biomechanics. The four competitive swimming strokes are divided into long axis and short axis strokes. Freestyle and backstroke are the long axis strokes, meaning that the strokes are swum on a rotational side to side basis. Breaststroke and butterfly are the short access strokes. One main component of all four strokes is body balance or core balance. Swimmers can strengthen their core or trunk through dry land or water exercises, and the core is a major component to all four of the swimming strokes. If the swimmer has good trunk control, the movement from the arms and the legs should come fairly, fairly flowing and naturally uh, if the trunk is controlled. There are some great resources for more expanded and in-depth biomechanics, and those would be USA Swimming, the American Swim Coaches Association, and the International Paralympic Committee for Swimming. To discuss training physiology very briefly, training is divided into a variety of energy systems. Recovery, which is very easy swimming, warm-up or drills. Endurance or aerobic training, and there are a variety of categories within endurance and aerobic, depending on the athlete's speed, the amount of rest, and the intensity. Or sprint work, which is all out, fast swimming. Again, various categories divided by athlete's speed, amount of rest, and recovery time. For more information on physiology or energy systems, you may reference USA Swimming. Within Paralympic competitive swimming, swimmers are divided into classifications when they compete. There are a variety of classifications. First is the functional classification system, encompassing 10 classes and including swimmers with all physical types of disability. Visually impaired and blind swimmers compose three classes depending on the degree of vision loss. And the final grouping for classification is swimmers who have mental or intellectual impairments. Swimmers only need to be classified when they compete at a disability-only competition. To include swimmers in local competitions, whether they be USA Swimming competitions, high school, or college competitions, the athlete does not need to be classified. They may swim against their able-bodied peers without having a classification. When an athlete goes to their first disability-only competition, they will be classified by a classification team made up of a medical and technical classifier. The classification process it consists of a bench test, a water test and observation during competition, and the bench and water test typically take about 45 minutes. When working with athletes who are blind or visually impaired, you may need to take into consideration the athlete's need to be notified where the wall is at the end of the pool, both during training and competition. During competition, it's mandatory for the athlete to have tappers and be tapped to indicate where the wall is when they're coming to a turn or a finish. During a practice time, you may wish to tap the athlete or set up a sprinkler system that can be moved around the pool area to accommodate the athlete. It's important in swimming to begin warm-ups with some stretching exercises, both to prevent injuries and increase flexibility. All athletes can participate in stretching. We're going to begin by looking at some lower body and leg stretches, and Alexa here is going to demonstrate for us. First, Alexa is going to do some hamstring stretches. She's going to reach forward with her hands, grasping her toes, stretching the hamstrings of both legs. Another way to do this stretch is for Alexa to stretch one leg out. Alexa's going to sit up, stretch one leg out, bend up the other leg, touch the bottom of her foot on the inside of her leg near her knee or if possible above her knee, 
and then she's going to reach out over that straight leg. This also stretches the hamstrings as well as the back. Next, Alexa is going to stretch her inner thighs. This is called the butterfly stretch. She's going to bring both feet in, bottoms of the feet touching each other, knees facing outward, and she's going to press her knees down as close to the ground as she can. Next, we'll stretch the hip flexors in the lower back. Alexa is going to stretch both legs out again. She's going to bend her right leg up, bring her right foot over on the outside of her left knee, and now she's going to twist to the right, bringing her left arm over her knee, pressing the elbow against the knee. This stretch works both the hips and the lower back. Finally, we're going to stretch the quadriceps. Alexa is going to straighten both legs out again. She's going to bend one leg, bringing the foot up behind her, and she's going to lean back till she can feel that stretch in her quadricep. This stretch can be done with one leg at a time, or if the athlete's extremely flexible, with both legs at a time. A second way to stretch the quadriceps is standing up. Alexa's going to get up here for us. Some athletes may need assistance. One, two, three. As they climb up, to stretch the quadriceps while standing, Alexa's going to grab her foot at the ankle and lift her leg up. She may need to hang on to something or someone to maintain her balance. As she grabs that ankle, she's going to pull it up behind her, again stretching the quadricep muscle. Now we'll move on to some upper body stretches. For upper body stretching, we're going to have all the athletes demonstrate for us. We're going to start with arm circles. The athletes should be spread out enough that they do not run into each other. They're all going to swing their right arm forward, making big circles with that right arm. This stretches the shoulder joints, upper back muscles, upper arm muscles, and shoulder muscles. Athletes can switch arms and also do this with their left arm. They can go forwards and backwards while doing arm circles. Athletes should start out doing this fairly slowly to loosen up the joints, and as they get warmed up, they can pick up their speed as they do the arm circles. Another version of arm circles is to hold both arms straight out to the side, making small circular motions with the hands, loosening up, again, the tendons and the muscles and the joints and the shoulders. Next, we'll stretch the tricep muscles. To stretch the triceps, the athletes are going to take one arm, bring their hand behind their head, reaching down the center of their back, and they're going to grab that elbow with the opposite hand and pull back behind their head. This stretch should be done so that the athlete pulls the arm to a comfortable point where they can feel the stretch and holds it for 10 to 15 seconds at that point. Now we'll stretch in a streamlined position. The athletes are going to reach both arms up above their heads, holding their hands in a streamline just as they would if they were in the water stretching out their lats, their upper arms, their upper back. Athletes should reach up as high as they can in this position, trying to squeeze the arms into the ears. Head should be stable between those arms. Finally, our last upper body stretch that the athletes will demonstrate will be lat pulls across the front of their body. The athletes will take one arm, grasping either the upper arm, the elbow, or the shoulder, Pull that arm across the upper body to a comfortable stretching position and hold that position for 10 to 15 seconds to stretch out the shoulder. And this is some of the, this is some of the stretches that the athletes can do to get warmed up at the beginning of their workout or their competition. We're going to look at the swimming start. The forward start is used for freestyle, backstroke, and butterfly. Many athletes will start from the starting blocks. Other athletes may start in the water. Alexa is going to demonstrate a forward start for us. Some athletes may need assistance climbing up onto the block. They may need an arm or a shoulder to hang onto. Once Alexa is steady on the block, I will give her the starting commands, just as if she were starting a race. Take your mark. Go. Zach is also going to demonstrate a forward start for us. First, you can see how Zach transfers from his chair onto the blocks, bringing his legs up in front of him. Athletes who have disabilities that affect their lower limbs may start from a kneeling or sitting position, as you can see that Zach is kneeling here on the blocks. 
Zach will receive the same starting commands that I gave Alexa as soon as he's prepared to go off the blocks. Take your mark. Go! We're going to take a look at the backstroke start. What the athletes are going to do on their backstroke start, both grips of the starting block with two hands. The starting commands for backstroke are a little bit different than the forward start. The first command will be place your feet, and the athletes take the time to place their feet on the wall underneath the starting block. The next command will be take your mark, followed by the go command. At this point, Alexa and Zach are going to demonstrate the backstroke start for us. Place your feet. Take your mark. Go. And that's the backstroke start. This forward start demonstrated by Carrie, who's a visually impaired athlete, is similar to the start used by able-bodied athletes. Carrie gets quick explosion off the blocks, right into a great streamlined position into the water. Michael is an amputee who's going to show us another forward start. Athletes who are amputees have balance issues on the blocks. Coaches need to watch that the athlete can balance on their full leg and maintain that weight as close to the front of the block as possible before their start. Coaches, we're going to look at the four competitive swimming strokes beginning with the freestyle. Freestyle is the fastest of the four swimming strokes traditionally. It's known as a long axis stroke, which means the swimmer is rotating from side to side through the long axis of the body or the spine. In the freestyle, the traditional kick is a flutter kick. In Tanner's case, Tanner's got limited use of his lower body and his legs are dragging. Um, this is fairly common among athletes with disabilities, although an athlete who has an upper body disability should be able to do a traditional flutter kick. The breathing for freestyle is considered a side breathing. Most swimmers will breathe every two strokes to the same side or may breathe every three strokes to opposite sides, which is known as bilateral breathing. When the swimmer breathes, they turn their head to the side, trying to keep their body in that inline position in the water without lifting the head. The traditional arm stroke for freestyle is an alternating arm stroke. The swimmer will reach forward and enter as the hand catches the water the elbow should bend and the hand will pull underneath the body exiting past the hips on the recovery of the stroke after the hand exits the water the swimmers elbow should be bent and they should have a relaxed arm coming over the surface as they reach back to enter at the front of the stroke we're going to take a look at Curtis's freestyle Curtis is a spinal cord injured athlete injured at the neck level and is a quadriplegic as you can see Curtis's legs and hips stay fairly near the surface of the water. This is due to his good body balance and strong core strength through lots of training. In addition, you can see that Curtis's hands are somewhat clenched or his fingers may be uneven. This is a characteristic of most athletes who are quadriplegics. Let's take a look at freestyle turns. Alexa is going to demonstrate a traditional freestyle flip turn for us. The swimmer is going to swim into the wall. As they approach the wall on their final stroke, they will reach for the wall, tuck their head, and do what's considered a flip turn or a tumble turn, bringing their legs over the top. The feet plant on the wall and the swimmer pushes off in the streamlined position, beginning the freestyle stroke again. Next, we'll look at a freestyle open turn. Tanner is going to demonstrate a freestyle open turn. Athletes who have limited trunk function may not be able to do a tumble turn or flip turn and move their body in a, in a tumble motion. Those athletes will do an open turn. They'll swim in and touch the wall, bringing their feet up onto the wall and push off in a streamline and begin swimming freestyle again. The backstroke is the second of the long axis strokes, just like the freestyle. In the backstroke, the athlete is rotating from side to side along the core or the spinal column of the body. In the backstroke, the swimmer again uses the flutter kick, just as in the freestyle. Kick should be short with straight legs coming from the hips. Motion of the kick should be about six inches. In Brandon's case, we don't see much of a kick due to his lower limbs being affected. Next, we'll move on to look at the backstroke arm stroke. On the backstroke arm pull, the swimmer reaches directly above the shoulder and their hand enters the water at that point. Upon entering the water, the elbow should bend at a 90-degree angle at the beginning of the stroke. 
About halfway through the stroke phase, the arm should straighten out as the hand finishes down past the hip. Backstroke recovery begins thumb first as the arm lifts out of the water. The arm's in a straight position as it recovers over the top of the head and again reaches back directly above the shoulder. Taking a look at the butterfly, first we're going to look at the butterfly kick. The kick should be from the hips. It's considered a dolphin kick. The kick motion is hip movement up and down, which translates to that motion throughout the legs. Much of the butterfly kick is generated from the core of the body, and swimmers who do swim the butterfly and have a strong kick have strong core muscles, abdominal and lower back as well. The feet remain together in the butterfly and move symmetrically. We'll now take a look at the butterfly arm stroke. The butterfly arm stroke is a simultaneous motion. Both arms recover over the water together, hands reaching forward directly above the shoulders where they enter the water. Upon the catch of the stroke, the swimmer's arms should be bent so that they get a good catch, slight bend in the elbow, about 45 degrees. Then the hands pull through underneath the body and exit past the hips. The butterfly recovery begins from the hips as the hands again come forward over the water for the next stroke. Breathing on butterfly should take place as the hands are just coming underneath the shoulders underneath the body. The swimmer lifts their head, takes a quick breath, and tucks that head back down underneath in order to aid the arms coming around on the recovery. We're going to take a look at butterfly for an athlete who has an arm amputation. In Tony's demonstration, you can see the power of her kick. She has great hip movement, great movement from the knees, and a good strong downbeat on her kick. Her arms, due to her amputation, still come around simultaneously, but her left shoulder will drop because she cannot hold it up due to the amputation. We're going to take a look at a swimmer who has achondroplasia or dwarfism. These athletes may have some restrictions in their hips and shoulders, but generally their technique will mirror that of able-bodied swimmers. Aaron's got a great butterfly here, reaching forward, good strong kick. The butterfly turn is an open turn, as under the swimming rules, the swimmer must come to the wall and touch simultaneously with both hands when they reach the wall. As Alexa comes to the wall here, you can see her reaching forward, touching the wall with both hands. Then she pulls her legs up underneath her and pushes off the wall into her streamline to begin her stroke. Now we'll take a look at the breaststroke. First we'll take a look at the breaststroke kick. The traditional breaststroke kick is a whip kick or frog kick as the legs move around simultaneously in the same horizontal plane. A swimmer with a disability may exhibit leg drag or they may simply show intent to kick. Maggie's exhibiting leg drag. Her legs are tucked up underneath her in a uh, 90 degree position underneath her body. This is perfectly fine in disability swimming. Uh, the athletes may let those legs drag behind them while they focus on the stroke they're completing with their upper body. The upper body stroke on the brush stroke is a circular pull beginning with both hands together out in front of the head. Simultaneous motion again in the same horizontal plane as the arms swing out to the side through and recover straight forward in front of the athlete. Next we're going to take a look at the brush stroke breathing and timing. The timing of the breaststroke stroke is very important. The sequence should be pull, breathe, kick, and glide. At the end of each complete cycle, the swimmer should glide. The breath comes during the pull as the hands are in sweeping before the recovery. Swimmers with disabilities may not breathe every stroke, particularly if they do not kick while they're doing breaststroke. This is perfectly acceptable. However, during each stroke cycle, some part of the head must break the surface of the water at some point. Next, we'll take a look at the breaststroke turn. The breaststroke turn is also an open turn, almost identical to the butterfly turn, other than the stroke that the swimmer will be swimming in and out of the wall. Hands must touch simultaneously onto the wall as the swimmer commences the turn, bringing their legs up underneath them, pushing back off the wall into the streamline, and beginning the stroke. In summary, the four competitive swimming strokes that we have just reviewed are the freestyle, the backstroke, the butterfly, and the breaststroke. There are many stroke drills in swimming that can be used to modify or work on the various parts of swimming technique and strokes. 
we're going to have Alexa demonstrate some of the more common drills in freestyle and backstroke for us. The first drill that Alexa is going to show us is called pause and roll, also referred to as kick and switch at times. This drill specifically works on head position and body rotation. The swimmer takes one stroke, rolls onto their side at a 180 degree angle, takes six, eight, or maybe ten kicks, and then takes a stroke and rotates completely to the other side. Next, we'll take a look at the catch-up drill. Catch-up drill isolates each arm stroke of the freestyle stroke. The swimmer's hand remains steady out front while the opposite arm takes a full, complete stroke coming back to match up to that hand out in front of the head. Finally, we'll take a look at one-arm freestyle drill. Similar to the catch-up drill, the one-arm freestyle drill isolates each individual arm. The swimmer can focus on the pull and the recovery with that arm as they take single strokes, maybe alternating as Alexa is, three right, three left as they move down the pool. Now we'll take a look at some backstroke drills. Similar to the freestyle pause and roll drill, the backstroke pause and roll drill again works on body roll. The swimmer takes one stroke, rotating 180 degrees from one side all the way to the other working on their body rotation. Unlike freestyle, in backstroke, the swimmer can work on keeping that head still, not having to worry about breathing. The next backstroke drill we'll take a look at will be backstroke one-arm drill. Backstroke one-arm drill allows the swimmer to isolate each individual arm. Alexa's taking three strokes with her right arm, followed by three strokes with her left arm. The arm she's not using at the time is at her hip, resting at her side so that she can rotate her body from side to side more easily. This concludes our look at drills for freestyle and backstroke. Well, there you have it, coaches. We hope we've given you the information you need to successfully include swimmers with disabilities in your local programs. On behalf of Blaze Sports, I'd like to commend you for your work and thank you for including these athletes into your programs. On behalf of myself, I hope you've learned a lot, and I hope to see your athletes on one of my Paralympic teams in the future.